Good morning and welcome to the Plymouth Church in Framingham's online worship. I'm Will Tanner. And I'm Gregory Morrissey. Together with you, we are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ, which means whoever you are, wherever you are, this community is yours. This morning, our worship is a special celebration. Not only is today Pentecost, it's also Children and Youth Sunday. <laughs> Though we cannot be together for our traditional celebration, our children and youth and their parents have been hard at work this week to bring us a worship experience that celebrates the wisdom and joy of childhood. To participate most fully in our worship today, follow the link to our worship email. There you will find specially curated home-based faith workshop for you, for your family to do together at home. Facebook friends, please like this and share this to your friends and family throughout the world and YouTube watchers. Please subscribe to our channel. Next week, June 7th, is the first Sunday of the month, which is traditionally a communion Sunday for us. If you want to follow along, we encourage you to pick up some bread and grape juice this week. Also, a special ask, please send us pictures of your home sanctuaries, of your tables, pictures of your family sitting down to dinner or enjoying a safe and wisely distanced backyard picnic. We'll use these next week in our worship broadcast. The church is open, it always has been, but our building is still closed. We are not accepting visitors or drop-ins at this time. Anyone out there who is right now nodding in agreement but doesn't think that this applies to them? Yeah, no, it really does. Please, we love you, but stay away. We want you to be safe, so please hang back. If you think Will and I are important, you don't want to imagine what church would be like if Nancy McAllister got sick. Our phasing forward task force is developing clear plans that we will communicate to the congregation very soon. We appreciate your patience and please, please stay away from church and stay safe. As we enter into worship this morning, we hope that you will take a moment to comment on today's video so that we can see that you're here. Facebook tells us how many devices play this video, but not who is watching. So say hello, peace, amen, anything in the comment section so that we know that you are with us. And now let us find the ground beneath our feet, the breath of God in our bodies, and give our full hearts, mind, soul, and strength to the love of God. Please join us in the call to worship. In wisdom, God has created everything and everyone. Let us sing praise to God every day of our lives. May God exist forever and ever and always be pleased with creation. Let us sing praise to God every day of our lives. Amen.
Today is Pentecost. It's the day we celebrate the Holy, Holy Spirit's blessing of the disciples. We remember that when the disciples were lonely and didn't know what to do, God sent the Holy Spirit to them. The Holy Spirit made the disciples speak all the languages of the world so that everyone <laughs> could learn about God. When people are apart, God finds new ways for them to be together. Please join me in the innocent prayer. Dear God, be with us this morning while we worship you we wish we could be together at church like you so help us feel connected to you and to each other even though we are apart amen A reading from the book of Acts, chapter 2, verses 1 through 21. When the day of Pentecost had come, the disciples were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem. And at this sound, the crowd gathered and was bewildered because each one heard them speaking in native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all these who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear each of us in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, and Cappadocia, Pontus and Asia, Phrygia and Pamphylia, Egypt and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and the visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own languages, we hear them speaking about God's deeds of power. We were all amazed unperplexed, saying one to another, What does this mean? But with others sneered and said, They are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of, Men of Judea, all who live in Jerusalem, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. Indeed, these are not drunk as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. No, this is what was spoken through the prophet Joel. In the last days it will be, God declares that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Even upon my slaves, both men and women, in those days I will pour out my spirit, and they shall prophesy, and I will show portents in the heaven above, and signs on the earth below, blood and fire and smoky mist. The sun shall be turned to darkness, and the moon to blood, before the coming of the Lord's great and glorious day, then everyone who calls on the name of the Lord shall be saved. peace of Christ is like the coziness of a blanket fort, the first lick of ice cream on a hot day, the smell of wood smoke that reminds you of camp, the sound of birds and rain and waves. The peace of Christ is like reading your favorite story over and over, even though you know it by heart, hearing music that makes you dance, sing, or cry, eating something that tastes like Christmas, floating in the lake and feeling the water hold you up. The peace of Christ is like Reuniting with family after a long time apart. No matter what the cause, we are always so happy to see each other again and give each other a big hug. The peace of Christ is like loving someone no matter what. Asking for forgiveness when you were wrong. Forgiving someone because they asked. Missing one another when you are apart. The peace of Christ is for you and for me. Today and every day. Peace of Christ be with you.
Today is Pentecost, and our scripture is the story about that one time that God showed up for the disciples while they were praying. So in today's story, it's after Easter. Jesus has risen from the dead, lived and ministered for about 40 days, and has now ascended back to heaven, back to God. And now the disciples are on their own, trying to figure out what to do next. So they go back to their upper room in Jerusalem, where they've been staying for a while now, and they pray. And while they're praying, a part of God that we call the Holy Spirit comes down on them like wind and fire and blesses them with the ability to speak other languages so that they can spread the good news about Jesus and the word of God all over the world. A lot of us pray in different ways and in different amounts. Some of us don't know how prayer works or what prayer is for. And I think that's because most of the time when we pray, we don't necessarily have an experience of God that is as big and as clear as what happened for the disciples on Pentecost. Prayer can feel a lot like sitting quietly, talking to yourself, and wondering if anything is ever going to happen. But sometimes when we pray, God really does show up for us like on Pentecost. In my experience, it's a really special thing that maybe happens only a handful of times in our lives or maybe even only once. Recently, something like this happened for one of our young folks and she wrote a poem about that experience that she wants to share with us today. Let's give it a listen. The Feeling of Silence. You have punched us. You have screamed right in our ears. You have taken all we love. God, I pray to you. Why? The world has stopped. The world is silent. And yet, I cover my ears and scream over the noise. God, I am crying, and it feels so good. I am trapped, and yet I feel free. You have broken through the silence. You have brought me to a place where it is truly silent. You have brought me to my silent God. You are here. And I'm super excited for you to share your poem with the church. I like, I don't know if your mom told you, but like, I got goosebumps the first time I read it. No, oh, thanks. <laughs> it was really very cool. Um, so I wondered if you would share with us um, a little bit of kind of what led you to write this poem. Like what, what happened that, that gave you this idea? Um. Well, I was in a very frustrating mood. I didn't really feel good that day. So I went downstairs and I sort of just let out all my thoughts. And then I was like, hmm, this sounds very, is poetic a word? Uh-huh. It sound, I don't know. It sounded um, poetic to me and I'm like, well, I mean, it feels good to write it and have it down on paper, so. Yeah. I, to do it. I love that. Um, it's really interesting to me that the, uh, the experience of the feelings that kind of led to feeling like God was nearby was um, frustration. Um, mm -hmm. Because one of the times in my life where I felt God like really show up for me in silence like that, I was also really angry. Mm -hmm. um, and I think sometimes... Um, sometimes we expect God to go with good feelings. Yeah. And um, I really like, uh, I like to know I'm not the only one that found God in some really angry feelings. <laughs> tell me a little bit, or tell us, I guess. Um, does this, like, having written it all down, does this poem mean anything special to you? Or do you, um, do you hope it tells the world something particular? 
Yeah, I think it definitely means something special because it's just, I don't know, it just felt like it's just everything I'm feeling during quarantine. And I think a lot of people are feeling like this right now. And I just think that's definitely special, but it's also sort of unique to each person, I think, so. Mm -hmm. Totally. And, you know, it's, it's interesting to think about that too, because this is such a special experience that, you know, when, when you're grown up and you have kids or you have nieces and nephews or grandkids, you know, this will be a time to tell them about. Kind of like the gospels are stories from a long time ago that tell us about Jesus. Like your, your poem and your memories right now um, will be really important in the future. I was wondering kind of from the experience that you had with the being frustrated and then kind of finding God in the silence afterwards, um, if you have any advice for, um, for somebody who might be having a hard time or like not sure where God is right now um, or if God's even real right now, is there anything you'd want to tell them? Um, I feel like if you're going to pray, if you feel like that's something you want to do, then I would let it just happen naturally. Don't force it. Don't, if you want to pray every day, if that's something you want to do, don't like, try to make it your own don't just make it natural and just let out your feelings don't try to make it too i don't know what the right word is but like just try to make it unique to you and how you want to do it mm -hmm. i think that's really good advice thank you so we are all always on these journeys with god right we're journeying with God in quarantine and it's super weird. <laughs> um, and we're like finding our own new ways to pray with those big feelings. Um, I, I wonder, do you wonder anything like new or different about God than you did before? Well, I feel like I wonder a little bit less about God now because like, I was sort of confused if he was actually there, but then I really felt like he was there, like next to me in that moment. And I feel like I wonder actually less than I did before because of this. That's cool. And your, your poem for me was such a good reminder that when, um, that like even when we're really frustrated or really angry, like God is right there, um, right there for us. We just don't, we're not always perceptive enough to feel it. Um, and on that day you were, and that's so very cool. Thank you. Um, is there anything else that you want to, um, to share with us or to share with folks who might be having a tough time? Um, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure. That's okay. Thank you for sharing it. Thank you. I am so grateful to Sophie for writing about her experience in prayer with God and then sharing it with all of us. I hope that if you're having a hard time with God or prayer in these weird and upside down days, that you'll receive Sophie's poem as a witness, as a testimony of the good news. God is here with us, not just a long time ago in ancient Jerusalem, but here, now, in Framingham and Ashland, Northboro and Marlboro, Holliston and Boston, there is nowhere you can go, no one you can be or become that is separate from God. There is no such thing as being too old or too young to be the voice that God chooses to speak a holy word. One thing that Sophie's experience of God and my experiences of God have in common is that God shows up in the stillness and silence that come only after a lot of struggle and big feelings, kind of like the stillness that comes after a really good cry. We all have doubts about God, things that we wonder and can't resolve. We can choose to avoid the questions, or we can choose the struggle. God is with us either way, but I do think that God is big enough to hold our struggle, and I have a hunch that God likes it when we come seeking. If you feel the nudge of your intuition calling you into prayer or contemplation, even if you don't want to or it makes you uncomfortable, I hope that you try not to brush it off. The Holy Spirit is calling and it's probably for you. 
find a quiet place like Sophie did, like I try to, and make yourself available. Enter into the struggle if it comes and let everything out. You never know what God might have waiting for you in the stillness and silence on the other side. Amen. everyone and happy Children's Sunday. I'd like to thank first the Cherub Choir members. Although we were a small group, we were mighty because we sang out with our strongest voices. I'd also like to thank the members of the Junior Choir for being so dedicated, getting up early, and coming to church when you might rather be staying in bed. I especially like the fact that we worked so hard for our exchange concert, and I'm sorry we had to cancel, but we hope that we'll get a chance to do that in the future. And I'd also like to thank all the members of the chapel choir who participated in the pageant and in the Christmas Eve service to make it really meaningful. Thanks again. Hi everybody. Happy Pentecost. Shalin and I have the super fun job of getting to thank everybody who did so much to make all the kid and youth programs at Plymouth Church possible this year. So first, to all of our Faith Workshop teachers who were brave and tried something new this year and planned so many fun activities for our kids, we say... Thank you. And to all the people behind the scenes who were putting papers and folders and sharpening pencils and cleaning closets and watching hallways and sitting in the nursery, we say... Thank you. And to our youth group who did dozens of really helpful things throughout the year and to all the adult volunteers who hang out with them, and to all the families that are super supportive of them, we say? Thank you. And <laughs> to Mrs. Tashern and all our junior deacons who help out during services throughout the year, we say? Thank you. And to our amazing staff of Reverend Greg and Reverend Will, and Mrs. Dooley and Mrs. Patukian, we say? Thank you. And to all the grown-ups who just took the time to care enough to say hello or maybe write a pen pal note this year and show us that they love us, we say... Thank you. So thank you. We would not be the Plymouth Church without our families, kids, and youth. And none of you would be here without the relationships and programs that feed us all. Aisha's offering an Africa exchange, Trunk or Treat, The Christmas Pageant, Mystery Mailbox, Shrove Tuesday Pancakes, Faith Workshop, Children's Sunday, Youth Group, Junior Deacons, every last thing that brings us together in love and fellowship with one another and with God would not be possible without the dedicated and enthusiastic work of the Family Coordinating Committee. Lynn Snyder, Ann Meta, and Nina Hernandez, thank you from the bottom of my heart for and all of our hearts for your hard work. Likewise, the Christmas pageant relies on the brilliance and year-round work of Leslie Dooley and Nancy DeRomero. 
and to Alyssa Patukian for accompanying the pageant and all of the children's music this year, Elizabeth Tustian for the best chicken suits I've ever seen, and all of the parents who pitched in on other costumes, props, and rehearsals. Thank you. Now I know Ann Meta has already thanked the Junior Deacons, but do you know who keeps the Junior Deacons calendar organized? Do you know who coordinates the Junior Deacons and makes sure that the adult Deacons know what's up with the Junior Deacons? Who makes sure that the right Junior Deacons make it upstairs from Faith Workshop on time for communion? Ann Meta and Shel Tishern do. Thank you both for your patient and detailed attention to this vital ministry. COVID-19 and the need to stay home has changed a lot in our lives and traditions this year. The loss of graduation and promotion ceremonies this spring is one change, one loss, that has impacted our kids and youth particularly. We know that nothing can replace what should have been for each of you this year. And still, we want you to know that we see you. We are so proud of all of your hard work. We can't wait to share in the world that each of you is creating. We know that it will be brighter because of your brilliance, more just because of your kindness, and more loving because of your fierce and faithful love of God and all God's children. This year, the Plymouth Church celebrates and congratulates the following students promoting from fifth grade to middle school. Abby Asnaro, Billy Byerly, Bobby Byerly, Constantine Chandomba, Christina Romero, Sophie Doucette, Zach Gorham, Gavin Kamande, Sophie Lally, Sebastian McKay, Alina Meta. Noah Miller, Andres Rodriguez. The Plymouth Church celebrates and congratulates the following students graduating middle school. Molly Asnaro, Madrid Cunningham, Julia Doucette, Skip Munko. The Plymouth Church celebrates and congratulates the following students graduating high school. Connor Andrews, Lucas Monko. Finally, we want to celebrate and congratulate all of our students who are taking a non-traditional path through school. Whether you're jumping ahead, staying back, or taking a break, we celebrate your knowledge and your courage, your striving and your growing. You are wise and you are worthy. Well done. We will be holding a graduation car parade for Connor and Lucas next Sunday, June 7th at 4 p.m. on what would have been their graduation day. Please plan to join us. Make some signs, tie on some balloons and streamers, and join in the pr procession to congratulate our high school graduates on their achievement and wish them well on their next adventures. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Since 2016, the children of Plymouth Church have collected our offering and faith workshop so that our friend Aisha can go to school in Tanzania. Over the years, we have gotten to know each other through letters, video calls, and trading arts and crafts. We love Aisha so much and we are so excited for her to be succeeding in school. Because we haven't been together for faith workshop during the pandemic, we haven't been collecting our offering like usual. We are a little behind on this year's goal of $700, but we aren't worried. We know that every little bit adds up quickly. As we listen to the offertory today, please consider giving a little extra for Aisha. 
You can find a link to our Facebook fundraiser in today's worship email and in the description section of the worship video Facebook post. Please use this link as the money given through the church website going, goes to a different fund. It only takes a dollar or two from each of us to make a big difference in Aisha's life. One of the things that we love most about Children's Sunday is hearing all of our children's choirs sing. And while we couldn't manage that for today's worship video, we do have a closing hymn that was a Children's Sunday anthem a few years back. I hope wherever you're worshiping this morning, you'll sing along with joy and gladness. All God's creatures got this in the choir. Some sing low, 
And the jaybird disagrees. No. No. no! I disagree. All dads preach that a place in the choir. Some sing low, some sing higher, some sing out loud on the telephone wire. Some just clap their hands and pause for anything they got now. Singing in the nighttime, singing in the day. Little duck cocks. Quack, 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 quack. Ben's on his way. The possum don't have much to say. And the porcupine talks to herself. May the peace of the Lord Christ go with you, wherever God may send you. May God guide you through the wilderness and protect you through the storm. May God bring you home rejoicing at the wonders God has shown you. May God bring you home rejoicing once again into our doors. Amen. <laughs>